I'm Sue Zecco. And I'm Jay Scruggs. And this is Sarah, Sarah Jane Zecco. She's my, my Bedlington Terrier. And so we're going to be doing a Bedlington trim. We're going to do it two breed profile, but we'll do it in more of a pet trim. So we will use some snap-on combs, um, but we still want her. She still will be the correct profile. Um, she's an old girl, so she's actually blind. And she's like going on 13 years old, so she's got cataracts and everything. Um, and so she's got a little bit of staining from some ear infections, which Bedlington's are notorious for. So, um, but the, I, I just, I love the transformation in her when she's all done. Um, to me, Jay and I have both competed. Actually, we've both done best in shows um, in the grooming competition with Bedlington Terriers. And that to me is, is uh, a really big deal because I think it's probably one of the, the most difficult breeds to groom. Um, and the reason being is everything they, they are is different from the normal that you work on. You know, your, your Bichon's poodles with the big round heads and everything puffy and the, the Bedlington, they should have like a cone-shaped head. It's going to be long, um, kind of like a, a, a tube. They have tassel ears. They have a hair foot. They have a roach back instead of a to uh, straight top line. Slab sided. Slab sided. <laughs> um, their tail gets shaved. I mean, there's just in the, in the the coat is very soft and it's very difficult to work with. And it's so. definitely one of the hardest coats to work on as far as scissoring, as far as getting your clipper work even. Um, this is just a very difficult coat, and every Bedlington you groom is going to be different. So you can't do a cookie cutter and breed or and groom every single Bedlington the same way. You have to adjust your lines, you know, depending on how the dog's built. She's a little high in the rear, so we've got to give the illusion that that she does have a, a nice rise over her loin, and and um, you know we'll show you these little tricks that we do. But we want you to remember when when we're grooming the Bedlington Terrier, we're thinking about parallel lines. Everything when we look at the dog from the front, when we look at the dog from the back, when we look at the dog from the top everything should be nice and parallel we don't want to see you know a waistline we don't want to see a lot of uh, bevels or different angles everything should be nice and streamlined this dog is bred for speed so the way we groom it we want to make her look like she could just get out and run um, and it, it, she's going to simulate a whippet or um, probably a whippet the most of all you mm. know when she's done as far as the shape and that really racy look we're going to try to give her yeah, and she's got, um, if, if you look at her, her coat up close, um, they, they have a very soft coat, but they, she's got these dark, they call them guard hairs, that actually provide a little bit of wire, and, and that's actually what helps the coat to, to stand up a little bit better. Um, so it's, I mean, her, her prep work and everything, she actually has the more correct type coat for this breed. Um, a lot of times what we saw in the, in the contest ring were um, Bedlingtons that had like a poodle coat. And those are awesome to scissor because they have more of a poodle coat. It's not as soft, but it's really not correct for the breed. So Sarah actually has, um, even, even at her age, her color and everything stayed really nice. So she still has a really decent coat. And could you explain the tassels on the ears, why they're tassels on the ears? Because a lot of people don't know, and I didn't even know this until we talked about it, but why their tassels are there. They're not just there for looks. Yeah, they're, um, you know, because we, when you get into the whole thing with the continental trim on the poodle and how it's actually had a purpose, and the same thing, you know, I, I was always kind of curious as why they tasseled them, so I, I had asked her breeder, and... Um, they, because they do, a lot of your terriers are, are varmint getters and they go into, you know, they go to ground, they go into holes and they go to, to search for their prey. And if they're in the hole and they're, I mean, these guys go for the, the scary stuff, you know, like the badgers and stuff like that. They go into a hole and they've got that varmint backed into that hole. They don't want them to be able to grab at them at their ears. So the tassels on the ears will actually help pin the ears back when they're, when they're going in to catch their prey. So just that little bit on the ears will actually help to keep it back out of the way when they stick their head in the hole. Huh, oh, Sarah. All right, now on her, um, uh, um, I, I have actually always done her um, because um, I got her as a competition dog when she was 11 months old. So I have always done her ears with a 40 blade against the grain. That's, that's what I would do in competition. For a pet dog, I would suggest probably using a 15 against the grain. Um, and what I want to do is I want to create a little V right here. So the, the tassel should actually be, the end of her ear is right here. The, the, um, the tassel on the ear is about an inch. I, I would kind of use that as a guideline, probably about an inch above the tip of the ear.